Look at you. Happy birthday, baby. Today is a special day for Rudy. He turns nine years old. Rudy is a canine working for the Annapolis Fire Department. He can sniff out explosives and accelerants. Rudy loves his job so much, and with so much enthusiasm, he forgets his limitations. I mean, he still thinks he's a puppy. He has no idea he's nine. Lieutenant Kelly Ruth is Rudy's handler. Rudy may think he's still a puppy, but Lieutenant Ruth noticed a problem with Rudy a few months ago. You can see a little hitch in Rudy's gait, and that's a typical problem for working dogs. It's akin to an ACL tear we get in our knees. The only way to fix that problem is surgery, and that would cost four to five thousand dollars. Uh, this amount was just a little above and beyond what we normally um, budget to that extent. So Captain Carol Spriggs and Lieutenant Ruth thought that might be the end of Rudy's working days until somebody stepped up. There's a piece of it floating right there. Dr. Sherman Knapp owns the Veterinarian Orthopedic Sports Medicine Group. They are a veterinarian clinic outside of Jessup, and Dr. Knapp says he will do the surgery on Rudy, no charge. Someone has to help these animals. They do so much for society, and they give us so much, and so it's, it's about giving back. Rudy is pretty lucky to come to a place like this. This is not your average veterinarian hospital. 75% of my case load is coming from around the United States or from around the world. So we need to be near an airport and also near, near a major interstate. <laughs> so with world-renowned care in Rudy's future, that little red ball might be the best present for Rudy. Having his partner back to 100% and pain-free is the best birthday Christmas present, all rolled into one that Lieutenant Ruth could ask for. I mean, we go everywhere. He's probably the only person that's been with me everywhere I've been over the last eight years. You know, I mean, he, uh, he's my family. In Annapolis, Don Harrison, ABC2 News. Best wishes to Rudy. Hope it goes well. Well, our city health commissioner, Dr. Lena Wynn, has endorsed the Maryland Health Care for All Coalition's Drug Affordability Initiative. The proposal allows him to make prescription drugs more affordable for people in our state. Last year, drug prices increased almost 9%. And since 2013, they've grown an average of about 10% a year. Under the initiative, the organization wants to eliminate pharmacy benefit manager gag rules to allow pharmacists to notify customers of cheaper drug options and create a drug cost review commission for high cost drugs. We have a right to information about alternatives that may cost a lot less, but be just as effective. We have a right to transparent and accurate information. Now, the proposal would also require drug corporations to provide notice of new, expensive drugs or price increases of older drugs and public justification for their pricing decisions. Checking out tonight's top stories, a Maryland City Councilman is one of five people arrested in a prostitution room. Crystal City Councilman Paul Emily was arrested and charged with solicitation for prostitution yesterday. Following up on complaints from citizens in Wicomico County, state police set up a sting that led to the arrest of Emily and four others. And police in Anne Arundel County have charged two more people in the death and disappearance of Jenny Lopez. The body of the 21-year-old was found back in September in a wooded area in Clownsville. In June, Lopez was lured to an area where she was beaten to death and buried. Investigators were able to identify and charge Jorge Berea Castilla and Dennis Aldana with Lopez's murder. They say Berea Castilla is the person who authorized the abduction and murder. He is in prison in Georgia and will be extradited back to Anaconda County. Aldana is already behind bars in Montgomery County. Well, a jury has returned a six-count indictment against Devon Carter. He is the man accused of killing an associate pastor in Baltimore. Last May, Lisa Ashburn was approached by a man while she was getting into her car. She tried to run, but she was shot and later died in the hospital. According to the indictment, Carter killed Ashburn to retaliate against the witness and to prevent testimony. But Ashburn wasn't the intended target. Carter faces a possible death sentence or mandatory life in prison. He is also charged with illegal position of ammunition, the murder, and other drug-related charges. Well, President Trump's uh, pick to lead the White House policy on all things environmental is facing an uphill battle in the confirmation process. Concerns about plagiarism in her written testimony. 
And now she's clarifying statements from her verbal testimony following questions raised by National Investigative Reporter Mark Greenblatt in Washington. I would never, ever tell staff to underreport cell taxes. Kathleen Hartnett White spoke with confidence in November at her nomination hearing to lead the White House Council on Environmental Quality. But a Scripps investigation after the hearing showed her past as chair of the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality tells a different story. Documents reveal she supported altering test results for radiation and drinking water by subtracting the margin of error and lowering the results in order to help 35 water systems in Texas avoid violating EPA rules. You can't change the federal standards by simply reporting a lower number. That's scientifically inappropriate, highly inappropriate. Dr. Arjun Makajani served on the EPA's Radiation Advisory Committee under George H.W. Bush's administration and points to the EPA's language in the Federal Register that tells state regulators EPA's interpretation of the rule is not to subtract the margin of error from test results. If you're not obeying that rule, you're subjecting the public to a greater cancer risk than what we agreed is acceptable. White defended her actions, writing, EPA expressed how EPA interprets its rules. and says, while I was at TCEQ, the agency followed TCEQ's interpretation. Both person for the EPA says it knows of no other state that subtract the margin of error. Adding, the agency delegates regulatory authority to states only if their regulations are at least as stringent as the EPA's. White is now one vote away from becoming the top coordinator of environmental policy for all federal agencies. In 2008, the EPA asked Texas to abide by its rules, but White still stands by her interpretation. I don't think government should be in the business of misrepresenting contamination in water. The White House did not respond to questions, and it's now up to the full Senate to decide on whether or not to confirm White's nomination. A vote has not yet been scheduled. Mark Greenblatt, The Script News, in Washington. What better way to make a difference during the holidays than giving back? But you need to be aware, Sony Charities could be giving away with your money and your gifts to get details when we come back. Well, it is the season of giving, and we've been helping us out all month with our Fill the House campaign. And today, we're actually filling the truck for the House of Blues. Skylar Henry is live outside the White Marsh Mall as the donations are rolling in. Skylar, folks, got about 15 more minutes to come out and help us fill up that truck. Yep, still a little bit of time. We're breaking stuff down now, but we're still accepting donations. Actually, a woman just came and dropped off a few more supplies. Our friends at Von Pears were packing this truck. We're trying to fill the house. as the House of Blues, that is, with supplies here. We've got pillows, we've got diapers, we've got uh, all types of clothing and things that people may possibly need, uh, specifically women and children at the House of Ruth. What they're going to do is they're going to pack all of it onto this huge trailer here, and how much, would you say it's halfway filled or a little more than halfway at this point? A little more than halfway. A little more than halfway filled right now, and we still have several boxes to go. Take if you want to pan over right here and take a look at just how many donations people have dropped off since they've been out here today. And it's really been a fantastic sight to see. People have come not only with donations, but stories of just how House of Ruth has helped them during their times of need and helped their relatives during their times of need as well. Again, House of Ruth is there to provide help and um, uh, support to families who may be victims of domestic violence. Again, we are out here at the White Marsh Mall in the parking lot of Boscov's, uh, right here in the back. We still have about 15 minutes or so that we're doing this, and if you can't make it out here in these 15 minutes, we're also uh, accepting uh, donations monetarily online at hroof.org slash fill the house. We still want you to come out here and match the donations. As you saw earlier, we did about $10,000 uh, that we donated from ABC2 to House of Ruth. We want you to match that. If you have anything, we've seen people come out here with $5. We've seen people come out here with $20. Uh-oh. Oh, we're getting it on there. We're getting it on. There it is. There it is. We got it on there. Whew, got a little nervous there. But, yeah, this is the type of stuff that we're talking about here. You bring out something. If you come out holiday shopping, you can buy some socks. You can buy... Uh, you know, a blanket, diapers, supplies, we'll take it. Again, we're out here for maybe 10, 15 minutes or so, but if you can donate, we'll ask you to please do so. Kelly, back to you. All right, thanks, Scott Skyler. And if you know somebody at the mall, 
give them a call, tell them they're out there, and have them drop by a donation. You know, because it is the season of giving. And if you're looking to give money to a charitable cause, you want to start with making sure it's a real organization. This is the time of the year when those charity stands are just all over the place. They're making actually a 12 stands of Christmas countdown. Scammers are trying to trick you by using charity names that mimic well-known organizations. Other charities may be registered, but only give a portion of their proceeds to the actual cause. So do your homework. A number of websites like GuideStar and Charity Navigator rate charities and show exactly how much of their donations go to what they say they're doing. The Maryland Attorney General also wants you to report any charity scams so they can investigate. But if you're out there and you're trying to scam people out of their hard-earned money, and if you're telling them you're using it for a worthy cause, and you don't, we're coming after you. All charities soliciting donations must be registered with the Secretary of State. They have an online database that's easy to search to see our previous scams and to our website at abctnews.com slash consumer. Most of cloudy conditions are still here, but they're beginning to push south. Skies will continue to clear up from northwest to southeast. We have an area of low pressure that's actually riding around just south of the mid-Atlantic. That's fueling the clouds, also producing a lot of that rain. That'll continue to move off the coast. And happy to say this rain's going to stay away from us. But as this area of low pressure gets closer, it will pull some of the winds down from the north. And therefore, we're going to see things start to cool off around here. Skies will clear up, and we'll also have a drier air mass in place. So therefore, we're going to be closer to our overnight low, which should be normal at around 27 for tonight. But in the meantime, how about those stats? Another day above average, 54 degrees for the high. Morning start, 45. But we are still in search of our 24-hour low. Temps will begin to drop out, and here's an example of that. 41 so far, dew points at 22, winds are calm, so we'll continue to see that number drop. So there's the 41 degree temperature near the city. Albuquerque's at around 41 degrees. Dundalk at 42, Rosedale at 41, but Perry Hall already in the 30s, and that's just the start. The 30 degree temperatures will continue to push in. Sykesville checking in. The temperatures at 37, Chestertown 39, Elkton at 37, and Falston at 37 degrees as well. So we'll continue to replace the 40s with the 30s as that cooler air pushes in during the overnight. So a much cooler scenario.